If we want to try to find the inverse function of something, uh, this, well, maybe I should read uh, the notation first of all. So if we wanted to find the inverse of something, we actually say it like this, f to the power of negative one of x. Now keep in mind, this is not the same thing, if you know your uh, rules of exponents, this is not the same thing as saying one over f. Okay, this is actually notation. This means inverse. That's what we're doing here. This right here is called an inverse. Okay, so this is what we're doing here, an inverse. Now what does that actually mean? I'm just trying to make this clear here, and maybe I think I've made it worse. So inverse, that's f to the negative one like this. So that's how we write it. We say the inverse of x. Now what that means, there's two ways of doing it. We can do this graphically or mathematically. So I'll show you first of all how to do it graphically. Well, what you do first is you graph it. That's the first step. Okay, so you graph it. And then what you do, you have to just, um, so in other words, you would graph, uh, maybe instead of saying graph it, sorry about that, I should say graph uh, f of x. Then I would say um, reflect it across the line y equals x. So what I mean by that is, let's say we had some sort of function. It doesn't matter what it looked like. So in this case, let's say I had uh, some function that does, I don't know, um, some sort of shape. It doesn't matter what. Well, in this case, we'll see it in a second here. Well, all I have to do is reflect it across the line y equals x. If you know your um, equations or graphs, this is a linear function. It's a straight line with a y-intercept of 0. So in other words, it passes through this point here and has a slope or gradient of 1, which means every 1 I go over, I go up 1. 1 over, up 1. In other words, I have to reflect it across. I'm just going to draw it like a dotted line here. So I have to pretend this is a mirror. And then I would reflect everything over here becomes over here. That's what I would have to do. Well, let's take a look at this example here. Maybe this will help as a practical example. So if f of x is the square root of x and g of x is the inverse, graph them both on the same axis. Okay, so here I'm going to graph, whoa, that was not a very straight line, but oh well. So this is x and this is y. So uh, we have to first of all know what f of x equals square root of x looks like. Well, the square root graph does something like this. Okay, so it's something that starts off at 0, 0, goes up and over like this. That's what it looks like. Now, if I want to do the inverse, remember I have to graph f of x, done. Right, this is f of x. That's what it looks like. But I have to reflect it across the line y equals x. In other words, this dotted line. Uh, maybe I'll draw that dotted line just to help me out. Okay, so this right here, uh, maybe I'll draw it like this right here. So this right here is my line here, like this. So that's how it should go. Um, I drew it a little bit wrong here because my function actually isn't supposed to do much here. Let's look at it uh, maybe more carefully here. We can see it if I do uh, this graph here. Let's say I go back to my calculator and I just clear this. And I say I want the graph of the square root of x. And I'll say graph. And it does this. So it actually goes down a little bit lower than how I drew it. If you notice, I drew mine going up a little bit too high. But in this case, hopefully you can uh, excuse me. But uh, maybe I need to do it in a different color. Maybe I'll do it in green. So the g of x is the inverse of f of x. In other words, I have to take this graph and reflect it across this line. So that means it starts here. Turns out it doesn't cross through here, so it's going to be the same thing, except instead of going this way, what I like to do is just try to think about this point over here, and I'd put it over here. In other words, it's going to be a graph that goes something like this. So it'll be something that, if you look at this, it's like a mirror image here, what's supposed to be at least. This is the mirror, and everything is the same over here as it is over here. So that's hopefully what's happening here. So this would be g of x. So that's an example of a graph, f of x, and its inverse, which we called g of x. See, g of x was the inverse of x. Now we can do another uh, way, which is mathematically. Now there it gets maybe a little bit weirder looking. Maybe I'll draw this um, in blue here. So uh, the first thing I would do, I would tell you to do at least, is uh, first of all, write, uh, write y and x. That's how I would normally do it. I would write y and x first. Then I would uh, switch, so I'm just writing you a little algorithm here. So switch y and x, in other words, you switch them around and then solve for y. 
in other words, get y by itself, and then rewrite in the proper notation. Okay, so I'm going to show you these steps here. This might sound a little bit weird, but I'll just show you. This is how you can do it mathematically. If you don't know the graph, uh, then you could actually do this without it. So mathematically, then let's do this one. I have f of x is this. It's x squared minus 2. I want to take the inverse of it. So let's follow these rules here that I gave you. They may seem a little bit arbitrary, but I'll hopefully show you that it uh, makes sense here. So I want to switch y and x. That's the first thing. Well, first of all, I write y and x. In other words, instead of f of x, I'm going to replace that with a y. So I'm going to call it y equals x squared minus 2, just to make it a little bit easier to look at and manipulate. A lot of students get really messed up when they see f of x here. So I'm going to write it as y equals x squared minus 2. But I had to switch the y and the x's. In other words, I have to call this, I have to switch. Wherever I see a y, I call it x. Wherever I see an x, I call it y. So in this case then, instead of y equals x squared minus 2, it becomes x equals y squared minus 2. I do this everywhere I see an x, everywhere I see a y, in case there's lots of them. Okay, but in this case, this is all I have here. And that, so I've done the second step. Third step is solve for y. In other words, get y by itself. Right now, if you notice, I have x by itself. I've got, solved, I've got it solved for x right now. But I want y by itself. So I've got y squared minus 2. I want to move the minus 2 over. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And of course, if it's a minus 2, it's an extra term here. So that means I can move it over here. It means I can make it x plus 2 equals y squared. Right, because if I do minus 2 and I do plus 2 on both sides, that'll get rid of this. And I'll put it over here. So if I do y squared as x plus 2, I'm almost done. But now I want to get y by itself. I want to do the opposite of y squared. And a trick I always like to tell people is look at your calculator in case you forget how to undo a squared. See this on your calculator, uh, the x squared, at least on the TI-84 and the TI-83. The x squared and the square root of x uh, buttons well, they're, this one's written in blue here, but they're opposites to each other. By the way, this trick is going to come in handy for logs and 10 to the x, for natural logs and e to the x, and for sines and inverse sine, cos, inverse cos, tan, inverse tan. All of these keys are really cleverly written like this. This really helps. Other stuff, not really, but uh, at least this is helpful. So in any case, in order to get rid of a square, I have to take the square root of both sides. But... Hopefully you remember this, that with the square roots, I'm just going to rewrite this first of all as y squared equals x plus 2, just to get the y first, right? If it's an equal sign, you can do that. You can write anything on the right, and you can make it to the left. You can make anything on the left and put it to the right, just to make it look a little bit prettier, so to speak. Now I want to get y by itself. So that means I have to take the square root of this, so square root of y squared just gives me y, and the square root of x plus 2, that's what I get here. You might think you're done, but not quite. Because it turns out um, you could have actually done positive or negative. It turns out whenever you do a square root, you should always think about well, whenever you're undoing a square, you should always think about the plus and the minus square root. So this would be my answer. Whoops. So that right there is what it would look like here. It would be plus or minus square root of x plus 2. If I wanted to graph this or sketch it just to see what it would look like, uh, if I wanted x squared minus 2, well, this is a quadratic equation, or a happy parabola, so to speak, that's just been dragged down by 2. In other words, if I draw this, this would be some sort of thing that goes like this. That would be, you know, minus 1, minus 2 here. That would be this thing. However, if I wanted uh, the inverse, that would be, you know, reflecting it across this line over here, and it turns out I would have positive square root of uh, x, but I'd have to add 2 to it. If you remember your translations, something that's a plus 2 means it actually is uh, like it moves to the left. So it's going to be something that looks like, uh, yeah, like this and like this. It's going to look a little bit weird here, but it's going to be some sort of function that's like this and like this. Um, in this case, actually, I think maybe the graph didn't simplify things. But this, mathematically, this was a nice, easy way to get the answer. Okay, so we go f of x equals x squared minus 2. And here we just say plus or minus the square root.